my administration fully supports a, a one China policy as reflected in the three joint communiques that date back several decades in terms of our relations with uh, Taiwan as well as our relations with the People, uh, People's Republic of China. Uh, we don't uh, want to change that policy and that approach. That was U.S. President Barack Obama speaking to students in Shanghai last November. As we continued our discussion with President Ma, we asked him which power is rising in the East. I wanted to carry on this conversation with the U.S.-Taiwan relationship and, of course, the U.S.-China relationship. Many have thought over the past years and decades that this is the issue that would cause a conflict or could cause a conflict between China and the United States. Do you think that that is still a realistic concern? Well, uh, yes, it is a real concern, but it was a concern. In the last two years, what we did in improving relations with the Chinese mainland has already diffused that tension. In other words, we have uh, been able to reach many agreements with the mainland to uh, effect more uh, extensive trade investment and cultural exchange. So the tension across Taiwan Strait, which used to be a flashpoint in East Asia, now uh, is a place of peace and prosperity. So the relationship among mainland China, the United States and Taiwan, has been the best in 60 years. Well, on that note, you were talking before we went to a break with the need to sort of de-escalate any notion of an arms race. And of course, uh, recently there was announced uh, more than $6 billion mm -hmm. of arms from the United States to Taiwan. And that obviously caused a fairly stiff response in Beijing. And I want to play you what the uh, Chinese foreign ministry spokesman said about that. The U.S. conduct severely harms China's core interests and China-U.S. ties. The cooperation between China and the United States on international and regional issues will be unavoidably affected. The United States bears the entire responsibility for this. So, President Ma, that is the view from Beijing. And I raise that because it's also an increasing question in the United States. I want to read for you what a former U.S. official has said about the relationship. This is David Rothkopf talking in Foreign Policy magazine earlier this year, saying that Taiwan is small. It offers us very little in the way of true strategic advantages. In the final analysis, it really is China's for the taking, and it is certainly not worth going to war for, regardless of what U.S. rhetoric has been for decades. What is your response to that? Well, we didn't ask the U.S. to get involved in a warfare with men in China. We are only seeking the procurement of arms of a defensive character. Actually, what the U.S. did was in accordance with the Taiwan Relations Act, which is the federal law of the United States. And we need those weapons of a defensive nature to defend Taiwan's democracy. And this is actually not only in the interest of Taiwan, but also in the interest of the United States. The view of American scholar does not reflect the view of the administration. And yet many Americans are saying, you know, is it really worth, given how extended America is in Iraq, in Afghanistan, fighting terrorism, is it worth the risk of going to war on behalf of Taiwan? So again, the question that, that, that I wanted to ask you is, what do you think would happen if the U.S. started to reduce arms sales to Taiwan in order to improve relations with China? And that's your goal, too, to improve relations with China. Well, if the U.S. reduce arms sales to Taiwan below the current level, it will reduce confidence in this part of the world. Taiwan needs the arms to defend its, its country and its democracy. And, but in the last two years, as a result of our efforts to improve relations with the Chinese mainland, we have already diffused the tension to a great extent. And this is more important than the reduce of arms. 
Actually, the supply of arms by the United States to Taiwan increased Taiwan's confidence and sense of security, particularly when Taiwan engaged the Chinese mainland in talks on trade and other matters. It, Taiwan wants to negotiate from a position of strength, not weakness. So that is why Washington understands very well that the arms sales will help keep regional peace rather than the other way around. Obviously, you've spoken about the Chinese missiles pointed towards uh, Taiwan. But uh, let me ask you just a quick response, if you can, to the question that's sometimes posed here. Why should Americans risk so much on behalf of Taiwan? Well, as I said, at the moment, the risk for the United States is the lowest in 60 years. In the past, actually, the risk was much higher. But as a result of our efforts to have rapprochement with the Chinese mainland, the tension has been greatly reduced. That is why the current administration, like previous administration, is very pleased with what happened in the last two years. Mm -hmm. And we will continue to reduce the risk so that we will purchase arms from the United States, but we will never ask the Americans to fight for Taiwan. This is something that is very, very clear. Well, let's talk about another issue of, uh, of contention between China and, its, and China and the world, really, and that is Tibet. Do you think the issue of Tibet, autonomy there, and the issue of the Dalai Lama receives or should receive more or less attention from the United States? But it is also the policy of my administration to support autonomy for uh, Tibet, and we also support the talks between Dalai Lama and the mainland Chinese authorities. I think that is the only way to find a solution to their problems. Mm -hmm. And regarding, uh, you know, internet freedoms and other such uh, issues in civil society, is that something that worries you about the policies of Beijing? You've seen the latest crisis between, let's say, Google and the authorities in China. Yes, I think in some of these issues, we do uh, express our opinion on these issues, not only on human rights, but also on other freedoms, because we are located very close to mainland China. Obviously, we are also concerned about issues in this regard. Mm -hmm. And on many occasions, we have expressed our concerns on human rights issues on mainland. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the sort of dominant powerhouse in Asia. Right now, of course, the United States has a huge amount of diplomatic, economic, and military power. When you look ahead, do you think the U.S. will maintain that role in Asia, its lead there, or will China take over? I think at the moment, U.S. plays certainly a, a bigger role. And, but I think in the future, the situation might change as a result of uh, military imbalance. That is why I think the countries in the region should work together to reduce tension and to increase stability and peace. On that note, President Ma Yingzhou, thank you so much for joining us on this program. Thank you, Ms. Amanpour.